Hello, welcome to the Pawnee News for April 2015. All right, so we've got a number of developments going on here, and we're going to actually start off with New Jersey because New Jersey has got some things going on that I, you know, I'm quite disturbed about. Uh, this, this first story I'm going to tell you is just unbelievable. Uh, you know the Six Flags Great Adventure? Well, it's located in Jackson, New Jersey. That is actually in the Pine Barrens. Actually, our Pine Barrens all around it. And Great Adventure, uh, apparently, has uh, gotten this resolution through Jackson without much uh, news or whatever. They kind of snuck it through the Jackson Town, town Board. Well, basically what it is, and it sounds like they want to do something good for the environment, but it's actually a bad thing. Six Flags Great Adventure is planning on knocking down 18,000 trees, 18,000 trees that lie to the east of the, of the, uh, it's, it's the east of the Safari Park area. And 18,000 trees, and much of it, of course, is Pine Barrens. And they're knocking all these trees down for a solar energy facility. All right, it's going to power the whole park. All right, so they will not be buying power from uh, JCP now most of the time. They won't be using uh, the grid. They will be using their own solar panel. Sounds good, right? Solar power, 21.9 megawatts of solar power. All right, and you know I'm always incur. I like renewable energy. I think it's always a good thing to do. But here's the thing: uh, they could have used other areas in the park. Now, first, let me show you what this area looks like, and you'll see why it's pretty upsetting to see what they plan on doing. Okay, so uh, this is an overview of the area where they want to put this development. And uh, you can see Six Flags Great Adventure is right here. Well, I say solar, solar farm, whatever. And what it is is they own the land here uh, that they want to off Reed Road that they want to put um, this is owned by Six Flags Great Adventure. It's not part of Collier's Mills. This is where it goes. But you can see the impact here, Six Flags Great Adventure and Collier's Mills. Uh, they're right by each other and literally where they want to put this solar farm. I'll zoom in here. Uh, it's going to be right here in this area here. Um, and on the other side of Reed Road is the Collier's Mills. So we're going to go look at the satellite and I'll show you. It's mostly all woods here. Uh, well, Piney Woods, of course, this is where they're putting the solar farm. So all of this, most of this is going to get knocked down. 18,000 trees, can you imagine? It's amazing how that's allowed. Uh, it really is. Now, look at the parking lot. First of all, look at the parking lot. Similar size parking lot, by the way. It's probably at least 90 acres or something like that. Why don't they put the solar panels there? Like, here on Long Island, that's what we're doing in a lot of our Long Island Railroad parking lots, is we're putting solar panels above them. That makes sense. It keeps the cars cool and collects solar energy. It's a win-win situation. Yet the people at Six Flags don't think so. They, they think that it's not practical and that it's not cost-effective. I don't know what kind of BS it is. I don't know what kind of BS that is. All right, so this is all going to be gone, basically. And let's just go ahead here and look at the street view here. Let's look at Reed Road. Remember, one side's Collier's Mills, and one side is uh, undeveloped land that's part of Six Flags that will be knocked down, and uh, solar farms I'll put there. All right, this is looking south into Collier's Mills here. This is Reed Road, a nice rural country road that's going to be have its scenery ruined, because all this side here, which is, as you can see, mostly pines, is all going to get knocked down for this solar uh, solar project. Now, this is going to have a negative impact on all the wildlife that uses this area. Um, terrible. And I won't even have a chance to show it to you because uh, or because this is all going to be knocked down. Uh, what a shame. All of this on this side to the left here, you see, is going to be knocked down for, for, for something that, uh, you know, they make it sound like it's green. It's not green if you're knocking down green to build it. Plain and simple. It's too late for these trees. They're all going to be gone in a matter of months. So as you can see, it's mostly pine barrens. Pinelands, pitch pines, uh, very important. It's actually right next to Collier's Mills. 
uh, and clearing this all this land, which is over 100 acres, will have a significant impact on the ecosystem there, a significant negative impact on the ecosystem, which certainly, I feel, outweighs the benefit that the solar energy will bring. And you've got to remember, they claim they're doing this to go green, but the reality is it saves them money. That's why they're doing it. So that way they don't have to purchase power off the grid. And they could have installed solar panels in the parking lots. And the parking lots actually were similar size. They could have installed solar panels throughout the park without having to knock down a single tree. But they didn't do that. No. They want to do this. And it's already been approved and it's starting this spring. They've rammed it through. Uh, there's no way to stop it. And uh, it's, it's a real shame. It's a real shame and it's an outrage. And uh, I'm not into rides or anything like that. But uh, I'll tell you this, after hearing that, I definitely won't be going to Six Flags. And I recommend a boycott of Six Flags over this. Uh, it's absolutely outrageous that they were able to get this through, Jackson, that they were able to get this through. Uh, I don't have an e uh, environmental impact statement, all that. It's going to have a tremendous impact on the environment there. Unbelievable how they're able to do that. Uh, so the plant itself is going to take 90 acres. All right. Uh, it's going to consist of 90 acres. They claim they're going to replant the trees. Uh, replant, what are you going to replant them with? Native species? You should be replanting pitch pines. They probably won't be doing that. So, yeah, that's uh, that's an outrage right there. Uh, you should be ashamed of yourself, Jackson Township and Great Adventure. And keeping things in New Jersey, well, of course we'll get to Long Island. That's the core of what we do here. Um, but keeping with New Jersey, uh, I have other bad news in New Jersey. Uh, Robert Barr uh, was approved by the New Jersey Senate. This was Christie's picked to be on the Pylons Commission. Basically, what it is, again, is that the Pylons Commission voted against the, uh, allowing this pipeline through the middle of the Pinelands. But Chris Christie had his own interests, and he wanted to stack the board and stack the Pylons Commission so this pipeline can get built. And so he's now gotten his appointee through, which favors the pipeline. This man, unlike the other people who sat on the Pylons Commission, has no environmental experience whatsoever. He's a political hack. And it's shame, shame on the Jersey Senate for approving this guy. Uh, unbelievable, you guys. Uh, unbelievable, I have to say. After all the people that came out knowing this guy was this guy, Robert Barr, is not going to uh, protect the interests of the Pine Barrens. He's a political hack. He doesn't belong there. And uh, hopefully, the other members of the Pinelands Commission, hopefully, uh, they can, when this comes before them again, because Christie is going to try to ram it through, I hope that they stop it because uh, it's a pipeline in the middle of the Pinelands. There's no, no purpose for that. Uh, there are other places to put a pipeline. You don't have to put them in the Pine Barrens. There are plenty of roads that go through the Pinelands. Put the pipeline there. Uh, so the other news that I've got to get back to Long Island. Uh, this is a pretty outrageous thing. Uh, the Long Island Pine Barrens Society, I've picked on them a lot. I've been hot on them. And this is a kind of example of why I really have very little respect for them. Uh, the Kent Animal Shelter, which is an animal shelter in Calverton, has basically out, outgrown its facility. Uh, and their facility is overcrowded. They need, basically, they need a more modern facility and they need a facility that's going to be kinder to the environment. All right? They need to, basically, there are no sewers in this area, so they need to improve the water filter, you know, the waste disposal thing and all that other stuff. Uh, and they want to build a new center. Now, they're located in the core preservation area of the Pine Barrens. Technically, if you need to do construction there, you can't unless you get a hardship waiver. So they're going before the Pine, the Pine Barrens Commission. This is the New York State Pine Barrens Commission. And they're asking for uh, a waiver, a hardship waiver. All right? uh, they you know, they are, have been a, an important piece of the community. They you know, are responsible for helping saving a lot of pets and wild animals and things like that that are injured and things like that. So the Pine Barren Society is uh, completely railing against this, saying how it's going to hurt the environment. Yet what they want to do is actually going to help reduce their impact on the environment. All right, that's what they want to do. They want to reduce their impact by and, and, and continue to save the animals. But this is, this is what I mean. The Pine Barren Society not one tree is getting knocked down out of this. It's not going to affect any pine trees. It's not going to. It's not going to result in deforestation. Where was Mr. Amper? A couple of miles away when they knocked down all those woods by Route 58. You know, I talked about it ad nauseum here. They knocked all that down. Box turtles, 
that was, that was a classic Pine Barren system, knocked it all down for big box stores. Where was Mr. Amper? Where was the Pine Barren Society with that? Nowhere to be found. So they're just picking on, I don't know why they're picking on the animal shelter, but this is why I don't want to be part of the Pine Barren Society. And what we do here is completely independent of the Pine Barren Society. Let me make that clear. We have no affiliation with them. I do not support them. They, uh, they, they talk talk, and lately all they're talking about is water. They don't even seem to give a shit about deforestation anymore. All right, so to me, where are the Pine Barrens in the Long Island Pine Barrens Society? They don't seem to care about the Pine Barrens because they sat idly by when they knocked down all those woods on Route 58. They didn't do a damn thing about it. Yet they're given this animal shelter, which is trying to improve their facility and minimize their impact on the environment. They're giving them a hard time. Really? That's something you just don't believe. But, hey, you, you read the article. It's really happening. Uh, you know, uh, the Pine Barren Society is involved with this East Quill in stopping the East Hill, East Quag Hills project. But, um, again, I mean, they talk about it. But, you know, Southampton, the choice is up to you. Anna Throne Holst, the town supervisor, you need to get in there and you need to get imminent domain involved, right? Because this is land that is that cannot be developed. It's, it's, it's Pine Barrens land, even though it's not in a core preservation area. Part of it is. But its development would have a significant negative impact on the environment. And therefore, and it also water quality, right? And therefore, you need to come up forth, and this is what the Pine Barrens Society should be telling you, but I'm telling you this. Eminent domain. You have the right to use eminent domain. The guy doesn't want to sell land, use eminent domain. Just seize the land from him. Give him the market value. That's it. You know, and, you know, let him fight it in court. All right. He said, he comes same things he said, as of right to build homes. I will say it again, whoever the guy who owns this East Quag land is, you're as of right. Well, this is the people's right. The right of the Long Island, the citizens of Long Island, and the right of the environment, that land be protected and preserved. And if you don't want to sell it, then we will take it from you. That's the bottom line. And I hope Southampton and Throne Holes, you gotta, you got to do what's right by the Pine Barrens, right but for the environment, take this land and keep it from being developed. That's the only way. Development here is not an option. Those are important sand hills. We Suck Creek is nearby. Uh, and and it, then development will have a significant negative impact on what really is one of the few remaining areas left that are is fairly rural on Long Island. All right, so the other news I have for you, at least we have some good news now. The cold winter has actually killed off a lot of the southern pine beetles. And, uh, you know, New Jersey says a lot of them are gone. I'm assuming a lot of them on Long Island also are gone. That's some good news. Hopefully we don't see any more trees succumbing to those uh, southern pine beetles. Hey, I, guess the, I guess there was a silver lining in this horrible winter, right? <laughs> Uh, but they are doing some maintenance, and uh, what, what, the way Long Island deals with it is you're cutting trees in areas that are infested with southern pine beetles, and there are going to be more trail closures at Wertheim, which was a hard-hit area. Uh, the Tupelo Trail, the White Oak Trail, was closed for a while. I really do not understand why they aren't using controlled burns to control these beetles. Um, you know, Long Island's pine barrens need fire, and I think this is part of the reason why we've been hit so hard with the southern pine beetle. It's, it seems like we've been getting hit hard then for hit worse than New Jersey. I think that we need more controlled burns, more fires. That's what kills the pine barrens and stimulates the pitch pines. Fire is a natural part and very important part, as I talked about before, of the pine barrens ecosystem. All right, and in New Jersey, they did a lot of controlled burns this month. They couldn't do a lot of them in the winter because of all the snow. But they're doing the controlled burns, and they, they bring it up specifically that this helps control the southern pine beetle population. But yet, for some reason, on Long Island, the New York State, they refuse to do controlled burns. And, you know, my hat goes out to the New Jersey Forestry Service, the, forest, the fire service, because they really are excellent in managing uh, the fire. You know, I was recently saw them at work at Jake's Branch Park a couple of days ago, and I have to say... It's amazing what they have and what they can do and how they really, New Jersey is really, even though I've complained about them, they still have much more of a commitment to protecting their Pine Barrens than New York State does for ours. All right, and it's clear when you take a look at how the forestry and the fire management goes. The last thing I'm going to talk about, of course, is Nice Bus. Um, we, New York State budget has just been released or they're in the process of, of finalizing the deal and signing it between the legislature and the governor. 
We still don't know. I've heard that they increased the transit funding, but we still can't get the media. Just keeps talking about other stuff, the schools, whatever. But they're not talking about what's going on with the STOA, the state operating assistance for, for the public transit systems, uh, particularly Nice Bus and Suffolk Transit and MTA and all that other stuff. You know, Mangano uh, claims in a recent State of the County speech that he preserved bus service. And this is something that really just annoys me. Just listen to him. Cooperation will allow us to preserve public transportation, which is essential to our economy. In order to advance efficiencies and provide reliable service for communities, we launched a successful public-private partnership, which saves taxpayers $30 million a year. And I specifically brought this up. You know, they talk about how they're cheaper to operate than Long Island bus, but I brought up the fact that MTA did a better job maintaining the buses, had more buses on the road, the service was more frequent, and... You know, they really had nothing else to say about that. Nice, they, they even admitted to me that they can't provide the level of service MTA did. They admitted it, almost admitted it to me. They said, well, we need more money. We need more money. Isn't that always the case? That's why the MTA and, and Nassau, you know, went their separate ways. Because Nassau doesn't want to invest in its bus system. And Mangano claims he preserves service. No, Ed Mangano, if you wanted to preserve bus service, you would have worked out a deal with the MTA to continue Long Island bus. But you didn't, all right? And this company here, they can't maintain the buses the same way MTA did. They don't have the experience. They don't, they're not even the same size as the MTA. They admitted the great big MTA at the, you know, at the thing, whatever. They claim that customer satisfaction is up nice, you know. Um, but the fact is we still have a budget shortfall uh, that may or may not be filled by Stoa that we don't know about, all right? Now, we still don't know about it. But Nassau is counting on Stoa every time. Nassau needs to put more money into the buses. That's the bottom line. Angano claims he preserved buses, and yet he cuts the funding for buses. And the fact is, they keep saying how, well, we're cheaper to operate than MTA. But you're getting less service than MTA. People still wait longer for buses. The maintenance is not as good. MTA is like going to a store like Macy's and getting a brand name. Nice is like going into Walmart and getting some discount brand. That's what I liken it to, all right? Not saying MTA is perfect. But they did a better job of operating this bus system, even if Ed Mangano thinks otherwise. And that is it, folks, for the Piney News. I don't know what is going to happen with uh, the STOA, but if, uh, if there is a major development in it, I will do a special update for you. Uh, the other thing that I have for you that really kind of got me is when I was at the meeting, uh, the um, NICE uh, Bus Transportation Committee appointed a new member, uh, um, Aaron Watkins Lopez, I think, from the Long Island Bus Riders Union. Yes, that Long Island Bus Riders Union now has a say uh, and sits on the Nassau Bus Transportation Committee. That's unbelievable. This is the same union that doesn't want the cash fare raised to 275. And I brought up when I spoke that the cash fare should be raised to 275 because that's less money for NICE. I mean, the cash fare should be the same as MTAs. It's so messed up and silly, and it hurts NICE financially. You know, but these people want to, they don't understand how things work. And, you know, I'm not on speaking terms with them anymore. And, uh, you know, I guess that's just for the best. So, uh, you know, anyway, folks, thank you for watching this Piney News. May have a good April, and uh, we'll keep you posted on that whole Stoa thing with Nice Bus. Let's hope New York State comes through so we don't have to make a lot of cuts. And if any cuts do take place, it would probably be in September. But let's hope that doesn't happen. Take it easy.